Welcome to Packing It Up. This is your lesson on the intro to creating packaging design. First, we are going to download the template file attached to your assignment. As you know, it goes into your downloads folder. You're going to use your file open to get the file. I have the file currently in a folder. You will be pulling it out of your downloads. Once open in Photoshop, you will see that you have a file with two layers. Your base layer is locked. Your top layer should also be locked. They do not need to be touched. You are going to convert your top layer, which is a mask, to knock out any image exceeding the bleed or extension of your image file. Remember our lesson in class on bleed. Bleed is where we extend our image past the template guides in order to assure extra image when we cut our job. Now, do not change the color now because it will help you in seeing your template. It will also help you see your edges of your template. So please leave it locked along with your base. What you're gonna do is click on that background and create a new sandwich. You have a bun on the top, you have a bun on the bottom. You're gonna be working on the burger in between. So please pay close attention to your layers to the right. Realize that your top layer is locked, but will remain on. Your base layer is also locked, but will remain on. Now, in between the sheets, so to speak, is where you sleep. This is where we are going to place our images. What we need to do is go to Google and begin to download images of the highest resolution Try to find pictures that are at least a thousand by a thousand pixels wide. And we're going to start to place and build our graphics for our soapbox design. Some of you might create image files. Some of you might paint a file using a brush in Photoshop. Some of you might take pictures and use those files in your shot. If you're doing that, you are gonna receive extra credit. You only need to use files downloaded from Google. What you have to do in order to use them in Photoshop is open them. We do not drag and drop files into our design programs. This is not Google Slides. Once you have a collection of files on your desktop, look over to the right, just like I teach you guys, there's my little list of files. I stay in Photoshop. I open my files. File, open. Click on my desktop. Now I can see all of the files that I want to use in this job. I found a neat little picture. Looks very nostalgic. I'm going to open this. It is a nice large file. It's 10 by 18. The resolution is rather crisp looking at it, but of course it came off the internet. Look at that text. It's only going to be so clear. But for our purpose, for our project, this is going to be perfect. You're going to do select all. The marching ants appear on the file. Command D, D selects. You remember our shortcut keys or Command A, selects, Command C, or Edit, Copy. Click over to the left tab of your original. Your template should still be on layer two. Command V, or Edit, Paste, gives you your image. It is now floating in between your template and your reverse mask. 
Again, the reverse mask is only going to be necessary at the end of the assignment. Please do not worry about it right now. What I do need you to remember is that your box has a front, a side, a back, and another side. This is a fold tab, another fold tab. This is the closure. And these are the bottom four puzzle pieces that fold together to create the bottom shape. This is not a place for images. They will be cut and distorted. The lid of the box is the only place you will apply an image of interest. Now, I'm on this layer. It's the only thing active. I can move it where I want. Now, we don't want to just touch because when we trim, they're going to be white showing. So we have to make sure this graphic extends to the bleed. We have a problem. Let's edit, let's transform by scale our image or hit Command T. You do not have to hold Shift in Photoshop. Photoshop keeps images in perspective. Now, when we blow this up, you can see it's bigger than the box. It's not gonna fit. So we're gonna have to alter that image. Maybe what we wanna do is cut the bottom section of the graphics off and only show that much or completely remove that and cut it off at this green line. Hit select or sorry, hit return. Get it into place. Now it's too big. It's not going to work. It's going to go from fold to fold. You do not want to have your flat image, your infographic wrapping around a fold, unless it's going to continue all the way. So that's not going to work. We're going to need to resize that again. We're going to want that graphic to fit into this space. And this is where your artistic talents are going to come in because we now have to zoom in on this and figure out how we are going to make it fit. Now, you're in a layer, you're in Photoshop, you have the ability to now go in with the marquee tool, second tool down, select an area, use the move tool, the top tool. You can separate that and move it to the side and save it for later. Deselect, realize, they're not connected, but they're still in the same layer. Now, we are now in and showing the way our template reads. We can see our fold lines. If we need to, we can turn off and on. If we want, we can place a guide from the rulers on the side of the file into our design. These guides show us the fold lines or trim lines. It's another way to help. So now we know that the graphic here, if we try to click and move, it's gonna move everything. So we have to blanket the image with a marquee, grab the move tool and move it into place. Now, it's too big. Command T for transform. We want it to fit the space. Now, we don't want it to be on the left. We want it to stay centered as it was in the original. Get it as close as you can. Double click and release. There's an edge. I don't like it. I'm gonna move it up. Command D, now it's clean. Let's zoom in and see what we got. We have a hole. We're gonna fill that hole. We're gonna make a marquee. We're gonna come down. We're gonna use the eyedropper tool. Press I and it turns into the eyedropper tool. The eyedropper tool is over on the menu under, let's see here. I have to think about it myself. Where is the eyedropper? It's hiding from me. 
I'm showing you this so you realize how you find your tools. I think it's in the paintbrush. Where is my eyedropper? Oh, there it is, right up top all by itself. That's how you find your tools, guys. You look, come over, click on the color you're trying to mimic. It shows up down in your foreground color. All you have to do, you could use the paint bucket tool, fill. I'm gonna slide over with the hand tool. I'm gonna create another area to fill in that shape. This time we're gonna do edit, fill, foreground color. That's two different ways to complete the task. Now, zoom out and you can see within a few seconds, few minutes, we've created the front of our box. This is the beginning of you building your template. The next step would be the next panels. Remember, this is your main panel. This is the front. Your sides can be plain. They don't need to be as elaborate or as busy as your cover. Think about hierarchy. Now, that's the front. It's an isolated area. I think I'm going to lock that and then create a new layer. I'm gonna treat this as a side. Now, because we have guides, I'm gonna add another guide to the side. Matter of fact, I'm gonna add a top guide and a bottom guide. So now, when I make selections, it'll snap to those shapes. Wait a second, you say, it's not snapping? View, snap. Now watch, boom, boom, it clicks. I think to keep things consistent, I wanna use this color. Again, eye for eyedropper, click the color. We're on a new layer, edit, fill. Foreground color, there you go. Front, side. Now, your left side can also be the same as your right side. Let's bring some guides across. Let's make a marquee. And let's edit, fill, foreground color. Deselect. We're getting close. We need some interest. We need to tell our consumer what's in our product. We're gonna to have to put a barcode on it or you can't sell it. So we need to place these images. Now, lock our layer. Let's create a new layer. You can have 700 layers in between your top red reverse mask and your bottom template. I wanna go and search the internet, Google. I wanna find a nutritional facts graphic. I'm going to open it, command all, command copy, back to my design, new layer, command V is paste, there's my nutritional fact, boom, but we're snapping, remember how we had snap in Illustrator and it was messing everything up, it's snapping to a specific dimension that we're not using, turn it off, now you have control. There's your nutritional facts. Let's get a barcode on this guy. Open, download a barcode. Again, make sure it's good quality. Open, command all, command copy. Gonna go back. This layer, we can call information. So we can theoretically paste this barcode on that layer. It's floating because it's a selection. Command T is gonna allow us to change the size and place the image. Double click and you're done. Now, if I click and move, it is on its own new layer because when we paste something in from another file, it creates a layer. But just look and make sure you bring it under your mask. We're almost done with the sides of your box. 
and I'm going to show you how this reverse mask brings it all together. One more panel, and we're all done, guys. Let's open up a graphic. We're going to have this be the back of the box. I think this is kind of cool. It's a bit tall, but I'm going to show you how to fix that. We don't need the full height of this, but we're going to bring it over anyway. Command copy back to your file. Let's find our file. If you can't find because your tabs are growing to the right of the menu is your drop down. Soapbox design. There it is. Command V puts it on a new layer It's floating. It's too big. I don't want to lose piping hot. I want to keep that in because that's pretty cool. But I just realized I cut this bottom off. Now, we are not actually selling this product. This is something we are using to create our first packaging design. We can get away with not having that. Don't forget, this is going into a fold. We don't want it there. Now, we do not distort the scale of graphics because it does turn circles into ovals and it distorts our layout. But we have a, t a slight gap here, guys. Command T. We're going to open it a little bit. You see how it's proportional. We're going to slide it down. Did we maintain it fit? Yes, we did. It is fitting. I'm going to hold shift. I'm going to cheat a little and shrink it. I am distorting it, guys. I'm breaking the rules very, very slightly. We do not want to be close let me say this again, guys. Remember this. We do not want to be close to our folds or our margins with type. They create tension and sometimes can get cut off. If you notice, there's gaps here, gaps here for my folds. None of the graphics are going into the fold lines unless they're solid color. Back to our image. Double click. Let's get our marquee tool. We're going to select that top. We're going to delete. We're going to select this bottom. We're going to delete. We're going to zoom out. And now we have a front, a side, a rear, and the other side with our barcode. This is giving us an opportunity to place some type. We don't do type in Photoshop. We use Illustrator. We use InDesign, but for this exercise, we will use the type tool in Photoshop. Make sure you create a new layer. You're going to go to T, the type tool. You are going to click in a place and we're going to call this, let's just call it soap box design. Photoshop writes the text in the color that you last used. Three clicks will activate it all. I'm going to make it white for clear viewing. You can see by collect, selecting the move tool, you can move the type. It's under the mask. That's why it's not showing up. We need to see this. It's not fitting side to side. Go back to the type tool. Click on the line of type like you were typing a Word document. Hit return. Now you can see that the type is wide enough to fit. It is not pretty. It is not justified. Let's three clicks or select from the rear up. Up top, we can justify center design. We can do the left. We can do right. I'm going to use center for this. I'm also going to reduce the size to 24 point so it fits. Click the move tool and now place in my box. There you have it, folks. Soap box design. Now you're saying, Mr. Anderson, we still have white. Well, we can change that. We can go all the way down to our background layer. We can create a new layer. We are going to look at our pretty box design and decide on an accent color that will be fitting for a background color. Eyedropper, walk around your image. I like this yellow. 
Let's make this the active foreground color. We have an open layer unlocked right above the template. We can fill the page with this color without making a marquee, without making anything else. And there you go. Now your box is complete. All we need to do before we print is turn off our reverse mask because we don't want to print red because it costs money. The whole point of this reverse mask is to not have ink or image outside of the bleed on this file to save money in production. Last but not least, we don't have much going on on our lid. That's where you open the box. This is visible. This is something you might want to see or create an additional graphic. So I think I'm going to open another file. I'm going to look through and see what kind of interesting graphics I've downloaded. Not a ton of stuff, but enough to get going. Let's see what this JPEG looks like. Command all, command copy. The size is pretty good. I can't find my file anymore. There it is. Command V, place it on a new layer. Whoops. It gets placed behind. You notice what just happened? I moved the active layer, which is the wrong one. I didn't lock my layers. Lock your layers when you're happy. You see me locking them. The only one I don't want locked is the current active. There it is. It comes out. It's underneath because of the layer. If I want it on top, I can move it above. And there it is. Now, this, we don't want to go past our guides. That is our cut line. So again, Command T. Shrink it down. We need this to fit in here. We also need to check turn off that background color we need it to go to this fold line we actually need the color to go out past this line let me zoom in so you can see I'm gonna use my move tool remember you're touching the fold that means white's gonna show unless this is on but you still have a gap here not cool again hold shift we are going to do a mild distort to get this to fit we are going to maybe lower this right to here because we don't need that little bit of type that's right on the edge we can double click we can turn our template off yeah look we didn't make it we need to change that we need to make sure that this is orange all the way to the end on that layer make a new selection it can go off and past your guides and your reverse get your eyedropper select that orange fill with foreground color deselect Turn on your reverse mask, and now you can see. I'll Command H hides your guides. Now watch. Command H. We can now see clean images in our design. Command H turns them back on. The only thing we forgot to do was grab our marquee tool, select this extra bit of image, delete it. Command D. Let's zoom out full size, Command H, and there you have it, folks, a completely filled infographic of a soapbox design. Last but not least, before you save this file for print production, you are going to take your reverse mask, which is locked. Your type layer needs to be locked. Your layer eight with that last image locked 
unlock your reverse mask. If you remember when we did the creating shadow exercise, we went to the layer, we held command, we clicked and selected the layer shape. Don't forget, it's command, click on the layer shape. Or, command D deselects, you can go select, load selection, you can find layer one, click OK. And there it is. It's just a long way into the woods to get a tree, folks. Now, we want to fill this with white. White is always available in your foreground and background menu. You can click black and white to achieve it. You have to rotate between foreground and background. Make sure white is foreground. Edit. Fill. White. Okay. Deselect. And now you have a finished soapbox design, full bleed, color everywhere, image everywhere, clean, free, with no extra waste ink around the outside, and you're all set. You can close all the other files you had open. This is the only file open, soapbox design template, PSD. Most important folks, at the end, File, save as, in your hard drive, in your folder that you have called Soapbox Designs, or something along those lines. You need to save these files. Soapbox Design Templates where I have my files. Soapbox Design Template PSD. You are going to put your name at the front of the file, T-O-D-D, -D. do not use caps please, T-O-D-D, -D, space, keep it a PSD so you can go back and work on your layers. You must, listen, you must have a PSD to use to edit if you want to correct. Hit save. Do not worry about this option. Matter of fact, click Don't Show again. Click OK. You have now a CMYK channel file with many, many layers that are all building, 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 building until your mask goes on. As we've said in the past, you cannot print a Photoshop file, a .psd. We need a PDF for production. We will go file, export, or file, save as, format, Photoshop PDF, make sure it's going in the folder for your soapbox designs. You're going to click save. You will always get a message. Click don't show again. And now, because we're graphic artists and designers, we always make high quality prints. If you want and you want to get clever, let's go to output. So go to security. Let's look at all the different options. We don't have a lot in Photoshop. We can't really make some of the things that we need. It's okay. Do not worry about it. You are going to now save this PDF don't show again, hit yes. And you can minimize Photoshop. You can open Adobe Acrobat. I have a file open, I'll close it. File, open. Let's go to the Soapbox Design Template file. Here's my sandwich. You wanna open it in Acrobat for printing, and there you go. There is no layers as a PDF. There's just image to print. And from here, we can then begin to go into the file, print, dialog. I am gonna make a separate lesson on that for you guys, because this is already long enough. I'm gonna hit cancel, and here endeth the lesson on Soapbox Design. Thank you guys.